Hi friends, welcome to Anshu's DIY. Today we will learn how to make this beautiful earrings. As you guys must have already seen, um, I have gotten stuff from uh, selectedpandahal.com. I ordered these uh, die cut or laser cut wooden um, earring base or something like that it's wood completely but it's very thin and light and i ordered this and it came in a pack and i unboxed it for you guys you guys know all the deal so first i thought i will do acrylic painting with this but then i wanted to try this for quite a while so i just thought i will give it a try i did try it came out pretty i really like it and i hope you guys like it too it's it's very very simple painting as you can see here I just did uh, the painting with some nail polish good old nail polish this has been sitting in my counter for a while now it is a little bit um, glittery as you can see uh, I'm filming with the Sun hitting here so actually this looks much better in the Sun as you can see here the Sun than the thing so it will be a great earring for summer so all you need to do uh, to make this earrings is these wooden uh, uh, base the wooden cut um, base and then a earring finding and I'm using a jump ring as well because I don't want this to get stuck here um, you can make a bigger loop but I don't think so that will look good so I am going to do this paint this with the nail polish you can use any nail polish you want uh, the ones that are you no longer using if it is a little bit clogged or something just add a drop or two of the nail polish remover and mix it and then it will be liquid again so you can use those um, nail polishes which you don't want to use anymore it's a great uh, way to not waste it and kind of use it in a project so what I, I um, figured right you can just paint it because you don't need any extra brush you have the nail polish brush itself that works perfectly fine but I wouldn't go randomly I would go with the wood grain that's what I felt um, that works the best and kind of work your way from the bottom to the top whichever way you want you can do it but I feel that this is this doesn't have more resistance it's kind of nice and nice nice sorry nice and neat somehow I got those two words mixed up so make sure that you have your window open because this has a lot of chemically um, smell I know anyone who puts nail polish will know that but um i would say just open your window a little bit that will help you with the aeration because we are using a lot of nail polish here right it's not like we are using only a little bit we are using quite a lot so and this is a fun project that you can do with your kids as well because um, kids love to do uh, their nails by themselves which they don't end up doing it very pretty but they like to do it I do give my daughter the nail polish and then I to do it but this will be a fun project and it is much more controlled and uh, I just put a cardboard paper on top of my desk just to protect your desk a bit and also it's a great way to use your unused nail polish you can double coat it triple coat it however you want but I feel that one single coat is enough um, as long as it covers the entire thing that's okay in my opinion it's really fun to do this But I wouldn't rub back and forth just how you would 
handle the nail polish with your nails nails are smoother this one is a little bit rough than your nails right so it takes a little bit of patience to put the nail polish but um, it's pretty much easy I'm gonna do acrylic paint of course but I thought this is so simple and let's just do one with this that way we have multiples to explore I have a couple of things in my mind acrylic paint um, with a brush we can do try with the brush with the sponge but you can also try with makeup sponge I'm gonna do the next tutorial with that the wood kind of absorbs the nail polish very well so you don't have a problem there if you have any spots left over you can just go over it again it's not a big deal like feel how much ever you want to like if you want to do a couple of coats you can do a couple of coats as I said and if you are happy with the first coat itself it's totally up to you how much ever coats you want you can fill it up there and if you leave it a little bit of time you know for sure whether the coverage is good or not you can see some spots right there you can go over and then once this one is dry as you can see there is a little bit of nail polish over there if it is there just run your um, brush through and just take it out because we don't need that if you leave a spot or two just go over it once more that's it and once you're happy with it just shift your hands your fingers and just go over the main part where you were holding it and you should let it dry You don't need to essentially paint the sides it doesn't get absorbed is what I I felt there is no need for it you can just leave it like this um, or you can keep a chopstick or something hold it like that oops uh, or you can just keep it in your finger for some time and it will dry we shall let that dry completely one thing I want to do is so when you add a jump ring so the hole is like this so you add a jump ring and then you need one more jump ring for it for the ear wire to say stay straight so what I did was I took the ear wire and this loop is flat as the ear part right so I'm just making it perpendicular so I'm just turning this loop perpendicular just like that see that so that way when I add this to the jump ring that will be perfect for the earrings so that we need to do and keep so here we go all I do is take my jump ring this is I think a six millimeter jump ring or an eight millimeter I'm not so sure take the biggest jump ring that you have available then you have a hole for your jump ring or earring finding and then add your earring finding as well so it's gonna come like that take 
your flat nose pliers use two pliers that's very easy to open and close the jump ring back and forth and there we go the jump ring is nice and sealed now your earring is ready so how cool is that it's so simple and easy straightforward and you have a statement earring feather earrings a statement feather earrings for you to wear so you can wear the nail polish and do the same earrings and there you have a pair so just put a paper or uh, this is from a shirt just a white cardboard so that is one of the earrings that we have then I have something else which I want to do uh, we can do this earring uh, this pattern we can do the round one some acrylic paints and these is from artist loft and this is also from the same brand and this is from Michaels that I bought a while ago so what I'm going to do is I have here some foam brushes. You can also substitute this with your makeup sponge, a new makeup sponge that you can dedicate it for painting. But this one is much more helpful because it has a bigger circumference plus I have a wooden dowel here so I don't mess up my surface, right? So we shall put this over here. Just be careful if you have a carpeted surface like mine, you need to be careful that you don't um, leave any paint over there. So let's just see how well the paint is. The paint is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this minty color aqua green, right? On the top and then in the bottom I'm going to use the gold. So... You can use any acrylic paint you want. Doesn't have to be this one. Um, this is what I happen to have in my stash. I think this should be good enough. That's a whole lot of paint, I guess. But it's okay. So I'm just... See this? and then leaving the paint and rubbing it with the sponge that kind of covers it pretty well you can also dump some on your surface if you want to and then work your way around oh that's so therapeutic i really like it that's so nice to work with and you can also put some on the sides. That way you cover the entire surface. Right? And then the other side as well. So take more. And just kind of dab, 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 dab. These foam brushes are fun to use. I'm leaving the bottom part a little bit so that I can use the gold completely and not use the aqua blue at all. That's what my thought process is, but it's it's totally up to you, however you want. Um, and then you can just lay it on down on the cardboard surface and let's do the other one so as I said I did one with the nail polish this I am doing with this foam brush and um, so go over the sides first when you have a lot of uh, um, paint on your foam 
brush then you can go over this I pretty much use the paint that I I got it which is a good thing right there we go as I said nice ventilation is always good when you are using acrylic paints and stuff like that If you can go through the round as well, I forgot to do that here. Let me try and do that so that we have a nice coverage. There we go. And leave that to dry. Then, what will I do is I'll take the gold. Let me just close this. It's very hard to close for some reason this is old gold guys um, that kind of looks new so i'm just going to put it on top of uh, this surface and i'm going to work that way i'm fine mixing the gold with the aqua green but if you're not you can go ahead and you know use another brush if you want i'm just going to dip it on the side and just go over this So what I am aiming is the gold stays down, right? That's what I'm aiming for. Let's see how it looks and we can cha always change our looks. See this a couple of coats may be worth this. I believe you will have to wash your hands and stuff like that once you are done but I really like to work with paints a lot in polymer clay earrings the best part and in terracotta earrings the best part is for me is to paint them once they are done that's my best part there we go you don't have to be perfect and as I said these are like boho earrings so you don't have to be really really perfect as long as you get it in there that's good enough and go over the sides too like how you did with the aqua go over the sides if the aqua is mixed as mine is right now i am not worried because i like the look of it and i'm doing the other side as well So if you dab, you give a certain texture to it. If you brush it off, you give a certain texture to it. So whichever you prefer, you guys do it. No right or wrong. Whichever looks good for you is what you need to go with. Okay. There we go. Um, this is nice and coated. So I'm trying 
to get a look like that. Let's see. We can do that. This one looks for some reason kind of very, very bright. Yeah. Let's do the other side as well. So have fun working with this wooden earrings and These wooden frames I bought it from selectedpandahall.com. I will leave down in the description box below the website details. Um, they approached me and asked me to buy some stuff from their website and do a review on them. And I really, really like their products. I did it before also. Mm, there was one video on my website. A couple of months back and I had bought some of the their products and I reviewed them so this also I really like and I, I'm going to let it dry um, I really like the kind of um, color that it turned out to be it's nice I really like it so let's just do another earring so this one right here, I want to do all gold and let's just try to do all gold how it is. Let's see. Do it on the sides as well. So when your earring turns or so, the color will be uniform and so, so is this part right here. Right? I know the teal color is coming through. I am okay with it. To have that kind of a brushed effect, I like it. It's somewhere there is some teal, you can see that. Right? If you want, you can do more coats of gold. That way you can, you can mask that color a little bit. So as yes, you can see, if you dab a lot, what happens is this holes kind of gets um, clogged which will dry eventually and you cannot see the um, the holes completely so you need to kind of poke it actually see this it's getting inside the holes which I can do something like this to get this out these things I need a thinner one probably an eye pin or a head pin or something like that just poke it when it is not dry because once you let it dry then you can do that you can still but it will be messy there we go it's not difficult
There we go. Take it off. And if you leave it on top of the wood, it will dry nicely for you. And now you can leave that there. Make more. dabs around there and then take it in your fingers run it at the edges so that you won't see a, a difference or a gap or something like that there we go let that try take the next one and run the down part first on the sides there we go I really like this So there is two sides to this die cut one side seems to be better absorbing the paint than the other that's what I feel when I'm working with this just be aware of that and the paint is dry mm. there we go we are almost done anyways it's just this part right here that needs some paint you can take it just by squeezing a little bit just taking it directly from that and dabbing it there we go and the other side as well I really like this the way it turned out I like that and then you can poke that hole properly so as this one and then let that dry so we finished painting these two I don't know if I can still use this brush but I need a cup and water hi friends welcome back this has been dried completely as you can see both the uh, frames are completely dry and they look very pretty and for this i chose this bead from sam's speed box subscription just this bead it's very very pretty i don't know if the camera is doing justice or not but it has that shine in it uh, i'm not so sure, sure how to capture those and um, I have here some head pins and some post earrings. I found this in my stash. It's very, very pretty filigree post earring. Um, there you go. And then the simple ball post earrings. So the one thing which is good about this ball earrings is, is it has that loop like this. So that's a plus point for us. Let me just um, tell you guys how I am about to do this just um, we need the regular pliers to make the earrings I use the tweezer nose pliers instead of the uh, needle nose pliers you can use either of them just bend this wire okay we don't need this much so I'm just going to cut it a little okay so it needs to go around so cut more because we need to make a bigger loop um, and then I need my round nose pliers and make a nice and big loop 
just like so now what I'm going to do is I am going to open up that loop and then open up that loop nice and big okay and then put it in here so there is holes in this frame multiple holes so the ones that's closest to the teardrop frame as the one that I want to put it I just maneuver this somehow let's see if we can do it <coughs> this is what my thought process was it's going in the only problem is not twisting properly okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it like that put it in hold it in place and then kind of just there we go we got that one and straighten that up see this it's crooked a bit so I need to straighten that one and now it's pretty good see this in this frame there is two sides you can see this two lines here and there is a line here there is a line here like an outline in the back you cannot see any of those but in this round thing it's only both the sides are similar there is nothing a line or so but it this whichever side looks good you can use it kind of right so that's uh, one thing I'm gonna do the next earring let's just do the next one I put it right here it's so simple it's it's a regular loop for us but I would cut the exact length I would take this short piece that I cut it in the previous one I would keep it right here and then cut the exact length so that I don't make a smaller loop or a bigger loop or vice versa right make the exact size of loop that you made last time so keep it about here and then just roll it around itself that bigger loop we need for us to get this through this frame so just wide open and then figure it out so this way or that way whichever way it's convenient you can put it right there so <laughs> take it in your fingers and push it inside that hole of yours or your frame here the hole is rounded and here it is in the triangle shape that also kind of messes up our yeah just push it with your fingers that's what worked last time so I was trying to do the same with this there are numerous holes in this frame um, so I just wanted to make use of that and anyways there is a whole lot of gap in the middle of the earring so why not dress it up right and what more better way to dress it up with a longer bead than a shorter bead and this green color is also very pretty 
just matches a little bit of the green and the gold in the frame as well so that's that's done so these post earrings doesn't come with the strong um, backs it comes with that rubber back so there is also a butterfly back sometimes it might fit properly or not it's totally um, dependent on the gauge of this post so I fix that and keep because sometimes um, this will get lost and it's transparent and you will not be able to find it so that's that so now you can see there is a small gap in this we need to close that but before that if we do this this obviously loop will not fit in this thicker uh, wooden frame so we need a jump ring but say if I put a jump ring let me show you guys if I put one jump ring open it up nice and wide and put it in this uh, loop right here and if I do this okay if I close it the earring will look like this okay it has to stay like this for that I need two sets of um, jump rings you can also use a thinner jump ring for this or the same size it's totally up to you so close this nice and tight okay and also I would like to close this as well um, so just press this against the frame and close it okay now take the other jump ring you can use a smaller jump ring as I said you don't need this bigger jump ring to connect the earring post and the other jump ring so now I put it in here and then I put this jump ring so you basically need two jump rings for every earring and if I put this and this will be on the back so there we go now your earring is sitting nice and proper and it looks very pretty I really like them a lot that one earring is done we shall do the same for the next one too open up a jump ring put it in here and use your pliers to go back and forth and close the jump ring nice and easy and take the post earring and close this just take another jump ring put it in here now take your post and put it in that jump ring and close it there we go so our other earring is ready as well uh, how cool is that so the next one is that for that we need only one jump ring because the loop is not perpendicular to the post in this post the loop in the bottom was perpendicular to the post that's why we need a two jump ring but in here it's flat it's in alignment with the post so we don't need two jump rings we just need one jump ring to go over the frame and the post so first I will add the post okay so just like so and then I will add the frame go back and forth this is our earring see what I was talking about so that makes a difference here it is our other earring is ready if you want to put a small dangle in this you can put it as well but I don't feel that uh, that uh, circle is uh, like a 
bit of emptiness because it's a big huge earring and there's a lot going on i i didn't feel the need to add a bead but if you prefer you can add a bead there as well right it's totally up to you so this is going to be like this and whichever way you want the thing to look um that means that is so in this uh, frame both the sides look the same so you can have any side as your front so that's that how cool is that we have multiple pair of earrings with paint with uh, with acrylic paint with um, nail polish and stuff like that i hope you guys like this video if you do give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification i do upload videos almost four videos a week and alive uh, thanks so much for watching have a good day i would love to read your comments please do leave some comments thanks bye bye